but then what's interesting about that too is like we also have compact car tesla has compact car coming out in the next mm -hmm. uh so so when do you think this thing's going to hit the streets because i'm hearing next year 2024 but that sounds early to me what do you think my best guess probably 24 months from now plus or minus 12 months i, I mean i think it's probably more likely plus than not just because of supply issues mainly but the thing that people don't i think really appreciate about the next gen tesla it is specifically designed to be able to be produced as fast as possible. That obviously means the costs are lower as well, but the key thing that people aren't appreciating is how quick it will be to put together. The modular manufacturing system, Tesla's already making a Model Y about three times faster than VW makes their average vehicle. Now, this system, I believe, is probably going to be at least twice as fast to put together as a Model Y, meaning that Tesla can make six of these things for every one vehicle VW could make just really roughly. So the point that I'm getting at is this thing is going to ramp from beginning of production to astronomical units per year faster than any vehicle has ever ramped by miles, no contest. So even if it takes a little bit longer than most people would hope to start ramping and hit the market, a few years after initial production, this thing's going to be in the multiple millions of units per year. And demand for this thing will be, I hate to say it, but quasi-infinite. I mean, I, could, I can see a vehicle platform, call it $25,000 roughly for Comparable, but not quite as good features to a Model 3 or Y. It doesn't have, you know, the same bells and whistles, but most of the, the core stuff, this thing could easily be 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12 plus million units per year with a few variations. You know, maybe a hatchback version and, you know, compact SUV and maybe even a sedan version. I don't think people appreciate that. And so it's going to ramp a lot faster than I think people realize. And it's going to eat the lunch of companies like Toyota and VW. And they, I just don't think they see how quickly it's going to happen. Yeah, I, I'm... I'm there with you. I think what's interesting about the compact car is like, I almost don't want Tesla to announce it. I almost want them to just oh, yeah. open yeah. the reservations. I know where you're going with this. Yeah. yeah. Just I, literally don't. I, I don't think yeah. they will. I think that they're basically going to try and make the gap between first reservations and first deliveries as short as possible. Yeah. Like a month max. Yeah. Like really short. Because otherwise, people who are thinking three or why are going to be like, fuck that. I mean, I, don't, I was going to buy it because I have to, but I don't need that. Yeah, I really think that Tesla is going to come out of absolutely nowhere. It's like, oh, surprise, you can now reserve the next generation vehicles. Deliveries start in three seconds and yeah. as opposed to having a big build up. But you never 100%. Have. Yeah, I, I, I just I, nothing else makes sense to me because if you because I agree with you, I think if 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 Tesla does this, which, you know, you and I are aligned that they will come out with a I, I have to. I'm I'm reaching a, a new audience, which I really appreciate is watching my shows. And I have to rem remember that everything I say, yeah, I just yeah. got to make sure that it's, you know, that, yeah, I, I'm confident about what I'm saying, but I want to make sure that I'm also like, you know, saying, hey, like I'm not, everything that we're saying is not sure to become real, even though we're both very confident about it. Obviously we could be super wrong. So exactly. but, none of us have any idea what we're talking about and we're still talking. Yeah, yeah we're still talking. Exactly. Yeah. Freedom of speech, baby. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> That's right. And um, but there's no way this thing won't have. If the Cybertruck had a two million reservation, uh, mm. two million deposits, uh, at a hundred bucks each for a car that was going to start at forty thousand, that looks crazy. What is a compact car that's going to start at twenty five thousand dollars in today's dollars going to do? Right. And that's yep. that's where it yep. gets it gets really really weird. So you have to. You have to get the announcement to be as close to the first deliveries as you can. Otherwise, yep. you're gonna, like you said, you're gonna have a stupid. Um, but I, we could be wrong. We could be wrong there. The other thing too yep. is, this car is gonna hit a market that traditionally, and this is where I'm sort of discovering, like talking to people like Ray uh, from Car Edge and and his son and a bunch of other folks, trying to understand the mentality of of the c typical car buyer, right? Um, monthly payment is huge in America. At least I don't know if it's the same in, in Australia, but it's like, that's how people buy cars. It's like, how much car yeah. can I get uh, mm -hmm. for 400 bucks a month, 500 bucks a month? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what's really interesting about the compact car is that it's going to enable Tesla because it's uh, optimized for speed of manufacturing. Uh, mm -hmm. Once going to probably safe to assume it's not going to have as many bells and whistles. It's probably going to be single unit motor. Uh, it's probably, you know, it's it's just not going to be super fancy, but it's going to be optimized to be as cheap as it can be built. And then it's going to be as reliable as possible mm -hmm. and efficient. Because it's going to yep. use an efficient. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yep. cost of maintenance, super low. Cost of fuel, super low. Cost of the car, uh, lowest yep. in its class by far. And mm -hmm. Tesla offers its own insurance, 
right? Yep. They have their entire service network. Uh, mm -hmm. They have, they're starting to offer charging per month in places like Texas through the grid, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So then now you have this thing now where in theory, what's stopping Tesla, let's say in certain states to start, to be like 500 bucks a month, you get a brand new Tesla compact, insurance, mm -hmm. electricity, mm -hmm. and maintenance all included. Here you go. Mm -hmm. What's yep. stopping Tesla from doing that? Seems inevitable. Obviously, the actual answer to the question is capital expenditure, because if Tesla's spending the money up front and then it's taking time to get the sure. monthly thing. But that's the actual but at answer. Some but point, I think Tesla can at some exactly. point. It's inevitable at some point. And the yeah. other thing that you didn't mention explicitly, but it is in Tesla's secret master plan for 2016, is that part of the way for them to make their vehicles affordable to consumers is to allow the vehicles to print money for the consumers while they're not using them. So you might be looking at 500 bucks a month, but once autonomy is solved, you can send it out to make you $700 a month while you're at work. Then what? I mean, bro, the floodgates open. And that's before the recent comments from Musk about potentially Tesla having more distributed compute. So if it's not working as a robot taxi, it could also be doing uh, you know, training AI, which again, will be something consumers can opt into that prints money for them while they're asleep or at their job. So they're always thinking of ways to lower the cost of ownership because that helps accelerate the transition. And so you definitely onto something in terms of a monthly subscription to get the next gen vehicle. And it's got, I mean, there's still an argument. Maybe they won't actually sell these for very long to consumers. They might just start building out their own robo taxis. And the argument would be higher utilization rates to have these deployed full time as robo taxis rather than sitting in consumers' driveways where some people don't opt into the network and so on. But in either case, this is going to be a really big deal. Like this is the thing that kills the ice industry completely. And that's why yeah. earlier I'm talking about 2027 or so, the last year, if you're lucky that any of these companies make a profit selling ice. By the time Tesla's next-gen vehicles are out, which will easily be by 27, you have to be a moron yeah. to buy something else if you've got the same budget. You just have to be dumb. And there are a lot of dumb people out there, but not enough to sustain these companies still profitably producing their, their ice vehicles. Just Tesla's goal basically is to make, make a product that's so good, you have to be stupid not to buy it if you've got the money for that category. Obviously, not everyone can afford a Tesla today and still in the future, they won't be able to. But if you can afford a Tesla, it's already a no-brainer to buy the Tesla vehicle if you're looking for a sedan or you know SUV or now a work truck with Cybertruck, unless you have an emotional aversion to owning the vehicle, which isn't logical. And Tesla's goal is just to make it the most logical decision to buy their vehicles by a huge margin. And that's why they're dominating every category they're in. The next-gen vehicle is going to be a whole other level of no-brainer. So wild, man. It's like, it's, it's, <laughs> and it's crazy because, you know, we waited so long for the Cybertruck and the compact doesn't feel that far away. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't think the wait's not going to be as long. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't think it will be. Uh, and again, I think that it's going to be almost stealth mode. We heard recently that the production systems are almost finalized. Now, the only thing that would stop Tesla from going from almost finalized to finalized to production is if they can't get the parts and the supply to ramp up to reasonable volumes. There's no point trying to ramp this thing if they can only make 50000 a year for the next you know, two years because the wait times will be stupid and the price will end up at nearly $40,000, which won't make sense. But assuming that they can get the supplies, the materials, um, I think this thing's going to come out of nowhere a lot sooner than people realize. Yeah, yeah. Damn it. Tempering my expectations. What the fuck? <laughs> You'll have oh, to talk the wrong to guy. <laughs> you have to talk to a bear. Um, I, I mean, I, I really, I know it sounds like insane and people who are from outside of a typical viewership will be thinking, these guys are so dumb, they don't understand anything. Yeah, about no, lunatics. Just sell that many <laughs> bit. You're idiots. I'm just telling you guys, set a reminder in your calendar for like five years from now and come back and see what happened. You know? Um, Solving the money I problem, think, go follow them right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I think a lot of people are going to be very surprised by how, how quickly this disruption happens. It's just, it doesn't yeah. seem reasonable, but when you actually look at all the moving pieces, you realize Tesla's got the scale of technology. That it seems inevitable. That's why, you know, it sounds like we should be tempering our expectations, but when you really drill down and think about everything, you know. It's hard not to be excited, man. It's, yeah. it's very hard because it's, it's like you said, it's, 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 it's all there. It just has to come to fruition. It's just... It just has to exist, and once it exists, it's a no-brainer. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be wild to watch. Let me let me um, let me ask you, Bob, before I let you go. I don't want to keep you for for too too long. Um, where so based on the progress you've seen so far, ahead of expectation, behind expectation, uh, on pace with what with what you thought. For what? God, oh, the bot. I'm sorry. Oh, the rock. Uh, let me think here. I'm just kidding. I'm not thinking. It's absolutely ridiculously <laughs> fast. 
It, I, I fucking like my my mind was blown when we saw the recent demo with the yeah. dexterity of the hands moving the egg from one thing to another. Now the haters will just well, it's just an egg, bro. But when you understand what Tesla has done in the span of time they've been able to do it, they effectively transplanted the brain of the car FSD into a humanoid form, then start training the bot, and it's gone from looking like a you know fairly advanced university project that some a team spent a few years cobbling together in the first prototype to something really incredible already. It's not that far off for these things to be able to do basic work in an automotive factory. It's not going to be super complicated, but if the energy cost to operate these things is almost nothing, which will be, and they're dexterous enough to pick up certain parts or pull a bit of fluff or move this or you know pick something up and drop it in here, uh, they're going to be useful, like actually doing useful labor in some situations a lot sooner than people realize. And I, I just can't believe the dexterity, the finesse of the hands. But the two things you need to solve with the humanoid robots is the brain and the hands. Now, obviously, locomotion is important as well, but that's not that hard of a problem. It's already walking around, big deal. But the things you need to be able to do is use your brain and use your brain to use your hands to do things. And the fact that we're now seeing the humanoid robot have enough dexterity and be able to fine-tune its sense of touch to the point where it can pick up an egg, transfer it to another hand, then place it down. And we saw that video in real time. Absolutely mind blowing, way ahead of what I was expecting. I mean, obviously, I'm not a robotics expert. I don't know what I'm talking about on anything, but I'm I'm stunned at the level of progress. Keeping in mind, this isn't a robot that's being trained to do a party trick like Boston Dynamics, where they pre-program a bunch of dance moves and you know have multiple cuts in their videos and make something that looks fit. This is something that's being trained, uh, you know, basically end to end on video. And so. And the other big benefit I think that Tesla has over a lot of companies who would be developing stuff is they're their own first customer. They can use these robots in factories and train them in factories to the point where they're useful in other factories and then start selling to the people that need robots in factories, then train and get better at factories and then start adding capabilities. Think of another company that's trying to develop a humanoid robot that is their own first customer that can use these at scale. And then think of a company, how do they get the brain that Tesla developed in the car by FSD and transplant that into the bot? So, yeah, I mean, I don't know how long it takes for the humanoid robot to become super useful and become a product they can sell to other companies, but I'm stunned at the current rate of progress. I'm blown away. And Elon, I think, says within a year they're aiming to be able to thread a needle, which is a big milestone as well, because that's a level of just minute dexterity. And egg, it's different because it's a fairly large object, but when you can get down to that like sub-millimeter, I mean, I don't know anyone watching you who's tried to thread a needle. It's not that easy. And let, unless you do a lot of sewing, you'll be <laughs> licking this and pulling this shit and trying to, like, yeah. it's not easy, right? So if a humanoid robot can do that and maybe even more efficiently than the average, you know, human can do, look out. Yeah. And maybe Musk, you have to double or triple that timeline, who knows? But I'm stunned at the rate of progress. Absolutely stunned. And the implications are just yeah. mind-blowing. Yeah. Like almost doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I was surprised by, when I saw the video... I thought it was CGI at first because it, 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 it didn't like, I was like, okay, like this looks kind of crazy. It looks real, but it's a CGI. And then I saw a Tesla employee reply to the video and they're like, no, it's totally real. I'm like, Fuck, okay, this is crazy. Real and real time, not even sped up. Yeah. It's insane, dude. It's, it's so wild. And you know, the, the egg example you brought up is like, yeah, you know, I'm not going to rehash it. The, the threading the needle thing, like what's super fascinating there is that the, you know, the level of precision you have to have to make, like you said, the smallest tweaks, dude, that's like, that's yeah. absolutely insane. It's like, you got to move like this yeah. much, you yeah. miss the hole, right? Just like this. Submillimeter. Miss, yeah. It's nothing, yeah. dude. Yeah. What? <laughs> like, yeah. And the thing is, if you, can, if you can have that. that level of precision at such a small increment of movement, then you yeah. covered everything else. Yeah. It's just like resolution in a screen or something that an analogy people might sort of you know, intuitively understand. You go from like, you know, potato quality webcam, you know, 15 years ago resolution. And if you improve the resolution, the image gets a lot better. And now we're at sort of 4K or even 8K. It's the same kind of concept for moving in the physical world. If you can nail precision at that tiny little increment of movement, then everything else is no problems. You can, yeah, you can do just about anything. And yeah, so we'll see how long the, the demo goes for the, the needle threading. But I, I the other thing that surprised me about the bot was that the demo update came out of nowhere. I mean, Tesla didn't tell us there's good. Like, you know, there wasn't like a big pre-announcement months ahead of time. We're going to be doing a big update on the bot now, and it's coming, and it just bam, here's the update. 
they may have mentioned in passing, but it was just out of absolutely nowhere and a huge leap forward from what we'd we'd seen, you know, less than a year ago. Yeah. I, th- I think what's, what's interesting about that too, is like, if you think about, and I sort of alluded to this earlier in the discussion is like, you think about between COVID and really the cyber truck delivery event, or like, you know, say uh, this, these like latest bot announcements, nothing really that crazy unless I'm misremembering something like you had battery day, you had AI day, but those were more like that was for the Tesla nerd. That was for the yeah. Tesla investor. Oh, yeah. It was, you know, mm-hmm. like ma- like the massive plan part three. These were mm-hmm. esoteric things for people. To, yeah. It wasn't geared to the, oh my God, there's a cyber truck down the road. Let me make some content. And my video has 18 million views. Like it's, it's not that it's very, very different. So we've had years uh, of Tesla not doing anything that really, let's say, it shocked like it, it actually reverberated through culture it was much more mm-hmm. like much more technically minded and yep. very much about laying a foundation but now that foundation is giving birth to things like the cyber truck it's giving birth to things like the bot it's going to give birth to things like the compact car it has been giving mm-hmm. birth to fsd for fucking seven eight nine years however long it's been right but like at some point these things are going to come to fruition and between then and now uh everyone else hasn't really done anything you know, this is where like, this is what gets missed. It's like, well, competition is coming. Like, bro, they're leaving. <laughs> competition is leaving. They, they're all yeah. leaving. They're like, nah, it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's, we need to make sure we're not losing too much money on this, blah, blah, blah. We're going to move yeah, on. Bro, so it's like, I, I was so wrong know? about this. I, I predicted, you know, I'm very, very confident in my predictions. Yes. Even if I'm not always right. I was so adamant that these companies like GM and Ford would be announcing they're accelerating their plans for EVs. Accelerating, Opposite. accelerating, accelerating. accelerating. Uh, bro, I mean, I like to admit when I'm wrong because it doesn't happen that often. I was so wrong. Like, I just, how <laughs> dumb can they possibly be? Like, what are they thinking? I think the answer, the actual answer is we'll just go bankrupt slowly rather than fast. And, you know, yeah. someone else can clean that up in five years or get the golden parachute. But to be announcing that they're slowing down because they claim that there's a lack of demand or they, they want to manage their capital better. Again, 2027, yeah. let's check back in and see how that those decisions have aged. Or it could be, you know, I, let's let's give them maybe a little bit of benefit of the doubt. Maybe they're sandbagging. Maybe they're sandbagging. Yeah, maybe. I doubt it. <laughs> maybe they are. Maybe they're competent as well. And maybe they'll catch up to Tesla. Yes. Maybe. Well, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. <laughs> let's slow it down. Yeah. You know, we have been doing a lot of dreaming. Yes, let's temporary yes. expectations. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I agree with you 100%. I think the, the, um, it's, it's, the way I read it, it's I think that the golden parachute sort of thing is not that far off because you you look at what GM did, right? GM, uh, they took a, <laughs> you know, they'll say this is the, the goes in a different bucket. They took a bunch of loans from the U S government to build out EV stuff. And then they're like, we're going to slow down our EVs. And then they announced a buyback of the stock. Mm-hmm. And you, as an outsider, yeah. you're looking, you're like, what right. the fuck just happened? <laughs> That's so brazen, bro. It's so brazen. <laughs> I mean, like, is that it, even I mean, legal? You know? Well, I'm not a legal expert, so uh, I, I wouldn't know the actual answer to that question, but it's definitely not right. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, the government is providing GM shareholders a under the table, you know, bailout, bailout. slash buyback just for a short term stock pump. I, I generally think that Mary Barra, who did lead and does matter. Yes. I, I really think she's working a five year plan that maybe started a year or two ago to just mm. maximize the short term and then get kicked out of the company get paid a few tens of millions of dollars for being incompetent, let the company go bankrupt and right off into the sunset. And then, oh, it wasn't my fault. No one could have seen that coming. It's so, oh, geez, wow. Oh, geez, what a surprise. But I think she knows what she's doing, which is looking after her own interest in the short term of the company rather than the long-term survivability. Because every decision she's been making, even going back to the Nikola partnership, which was a very clear... Shout out opinion, Trevor Milton. A very, a very clear <laughs> attempt to... Jump on board the EV, you know, bell curve hype train when Nikola was mooning. It's, oh, let's just get some Nikola investors over. And yeah. so strategically, I think what she was doing there was trying to you know, get a bit of that gravy train, as Trevor might say in his own words. And every decision since that point in time has really seemed short-term focused. And uh, yeah, I just, I really don't think that GM's doing anything that's in the long-term interest of their shareholders at all. The Ultium platform, that form factor, you know, Elon years ago called out Pouch being a bad idea and then GM quietly abandoned that form factor a couple of years later. 
didn't make a big deal about it after touting their industry leading amazing incredible ultium platform and yeah it's just poor decision after poor decision after poor decision but if you look at the company through a short-term lens a lot of these decisions appear to be designed to prop up the company's financials short term and investor profit ups, profits short term and then see if i can later five years from now yeah i mean and, and not to mention that b being captured by your shareholders which which will not allow you to take a big enough risk to put dividends at risk you know and that's mm. another thing that i it, it sometimes gets missed is like you know we talk about what gets missed by folks that aren't in the weeds, right? Like really, really looking at this super closely. It's like mm -hmm. the, these public companies, Ford, GM, Stellantis, name them, Mercedes, BMW, whatever you go down the list. That's out of very, very few ones that actually are willing to take risks. Um, their investor base will not allow them to do what they need to do because it disrupts their ability to generate cash for investors. It's that mm -hmm. simple. I mean, look at what happens with Tesla, what happened with Tesla in the last year or two, where, you know, a lot of, uh, um, I'm going to say this in the nicest way possible, folks that were traditionally not following the story closely became mm -hmm. much more uh, uh, fascinated with the story, but they were primarily in it be from an investor uh, perspective. And when yeah. the company wasn't doing things that aligned with what they thought they should do to maximize shareholder value, they started going, they got uh, mad. Uh, you know, they get mad, they're crazy. you know, how does exactly. this whole Tesla stock price tomorrow? Yes. Common yeah. question. So yes. it happened to Tesla, right? So it happened to Tesla. Mm -hmm. You don't think that's happening to GM and Ford every single day? Like th those people actually of have a, a back channel to the CEO. And those of people course, yeah. will tell the CEO and the CEO will be like, oh yeah, I'm sorry. No, no. We'll make sure never to do that. Right. But in mm -hmm. the case of Tesla, you have a dude that's like, I don't like literally go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. Tes Tesla has literally. a leader. These other companies do not have a leader. That's the difference. A leader leads. GM, etc. Followers in a CEO's role. So that's, that's fair. to, you know, investors, big institutions. You know, hey, hey, it's hey Mary, do you want to collude and steal Tesla's valor? Mary's like, oh, of course, this is going to be great. <laughs> Whereas, you know, somebody who's a leader would say, you know what, that's not right. We're not going to gonna appear at this thing. And, and you know, you remember the, the whole incident with Joe Biden claiming that GM had led and mattered. An actual oh, yeah. leader would have said, well, we appreciate the comments, but in truth, we do have to give credit to Tesla. They really are leading the way and we really respect it. That's what a leader would have done. We didn't hear that. Very true. So, yeah, I think that's it's very difference. true. You know, leaders have to make tough decisions and you've got a lot of, you know, faux leaders who really just are pandering. And as a result, a lot of companies are going to go belly up because their leaders didn't do what they needed to, even though it would be uncomfortable and painful. And the one or two leaders that try, shout out to Herbert Dees Nuts. See you later, mate. He was trying <laughs> to do the right things and saying the right things. The next minute, the guy gets shit canned. Yeah, that that's to this day, that's like, that should have been a, a gigantic warning sign uh, and, and I mean, it, it was for a lot of people that this is not going the right direction for for BW, and you can see it in the numbers. And you know, we saw today as we're recording this. I'm not sure when this will get published, but today, well, the last 24 hours, the announcement that BW are finally, finally, the North American yes. seven months. It took seven months Woo! for these morons to go. Yeah, we'll have what Ford's having, please. Seven well, you know months. why though, right? You know why? You bureaucratic, red tape, encrusted clusterfuck. They the own company. Electrify America. They electrify my arsenal. Yeah, I know, but that's irrelevant. Yeah. <laughs> it still was a no-brainer. It was still going to happen. The fact that yeah. they built out Electrify My Arsehole is irrelevant. Anyone with a brain at that company would have realized, well, you know what? Ford's already got the agreement. We'll just order what Ford's ordering. Hey, hey, Elon, can we get the same deal as Ford, please? That's all it took. And it was inevitable yeah. this would happen. But analysis paralysis, brain damage, too many people making decisions. Oh, well, we've already got a network that sucks. So let's just we sit on our hands for seven months for this obvious low-hanging fruit. Just imagine how slow they're going to be doing things that actually matter when it's taken these more on seven months just to say, yep, we will follow all the other automotive manufacturers who are jumping on board. In 2025, yeah. by the way, a year after yeah. everybody else. Of yeah, because everybody else is 2024. 20, 20, yeah. slow. Yeah, of course. Wild, dude. It's, it's, yeah, this is like, you know, if they're, I, I think we have every day, I'm just going to make, I'm going to make an out there statement. Uh, which might be not, you might not sound trigger too alert. out there for trigger you. Alert. Yeah, trigger alert. I think we have every data point needed to say that legacy auto, it will not survive the, de the decade, as you say. You know, you've been saying this yes. quite often. I think we have too many yeah. data points. I want to say that since auto, last decade, technically. Yes, you have. <laughs> technically. <laughs> you have, you have. 
I, I think I think there's enough data points to say, uh, let me rephrase it. I think a majority of legacy automakers will be in gigantic trouble by the end of this decade because of exactly what people like you and others have have painted, which is innovators dilemma. And these people are way too slow. They're way too bureaucratic. Tesla has too much of a lead. They have a leader that actually cares about engineering. They don't, they're mm -hmm. not, um, they're not uh held hostage by investors. They're focusing on what needs to get done so that they have a fruitful uh future where they are the dominant force uh, mm -hmm. that's driving that specific type of thing they're working on. And it's we have enough data now that is painting this, that, that has painted this picture. It's like um, the analogy I'll use is like, you know, you, you're painting a picture and like the first few brushes you make, you kind of, you know, if you view it from a third per person, you know, from a third party perspective, you're like watching an artist paint. The first 20% of it, you're not really sure what they're painting. But at some yeah. point you're like, oh, wow, that's a, that's a house on a, on a mountainside mm -hmm. with a river flowing, right? I think mm -hmm. now that picture's there, it's just the color hasn't been filled in and the color is mm -hmm. going to take like another 60, 70, 80% of the work. But like you can mm -hmm. see what's happening. You can see oh, what's yeah. happening. Yeah, it's yeah. there for yeah. everybody to they're see. They're all on fire. You can see the smoke and flames. Some people haven't made it out yet, but it's pretty clear they're all going to get burnt to a crisp. Yeah, it's and it's kind of yeah. sad to think about, but I mean, it's 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 the that's what happens when you have an innovative company coming through that's that's mm. uh, doing things very differently, and yep. the other companies are just not well equipped to, at the very least, copy. You know, and yep. again, we could be wrong in this assessment, but I just I don't know. I think there's too many clues that point to the opposite. Yeah, so. I, I'm willing to bet the chance of me being wrong on this is about 0.0000042069%. It's possible, <laughs> but exceedingly unlikely. And yeah. I don't say that without having really thought about it. Uh, the thing with disruption is that if you're a company and you are not constantly disrupting yourself, for example, Tesla, $25,000 vehicle is going to disrupt the 3 and Y. The 3 and Y disrupted the SNX. If you're not constantly doing that to yourself, someone else will come along and do it. The thing about the automotive industry is, for whatever reasons, just pure chance, that industry has seen very little innovation or disruption of any kind for a century. It's just been incremental improvement after incremental improvement. One, because it's really capital intensive. It's very hard to get into for a disruptor. And two, like, why would you change anything if you're making a few tens of millions of dollars per year on a good year in profits? May add a cup holder for next year's model and suddenly they keep selling. You can manipulate people with advertising into thinking your vehicles are safe when they're not or, you know, that you'll get the girl if you buy this vehicle and you won't. And so they've been in stasis and super complacent, and that's totally fine until a company comes along who will disrupt you. But in order for a company to survive, they constantly need to be disrupting themselves. A good example of what's happening now with these large language models applies pretty strongly, for example, to Google, who dominate search. But LLMs are going to completely replace search because the whole reason that people search is not for the process of searching, but to find the end result. And an LLM can cut out search engines completely. You tell it what you want, and it'll do the end destination stuff. So Google are intelligent to be trying to disrupt themselves, even though they know they're going to lose a ton of search revenue. If they don't do it, some other LLM is going to do it. And suddenly Google is going to go from the biggest search engine in the world to who even uses search engines, bro. And so I think these automotive companies are learning the lesson that because they weren't attempting to disrupt themselves, someone is about to do it for them. And it is a pretty tough industry to break into. And as Elon always points out, companies that don't go bankrupt producing automotive vehicles that have started in the last 100 years, basically don't exist. But now that Tesla's sort of got over that mountain and they are going to be successful, these companies have no hope. And the key for Tesla, for investors to keep an eye on in the future, is can they retain that DNA where they're extremely aggressive, resourceful, lean, efficient, constantly trying to disrupt and disrupting themselves. Yeah. Like You might see a few folks, I won't name any names, on Wall Street who are really focused on Tesla's gross automotive margins over the next few quarters. And why would you reduce your prices when you can just advertise? And These people don't understand the whole concept of disrupting yourself as a company. Tesla's going to keep driving the cost of their vehicles down and making them better and cheaper over time. And sometimes the margins will start contracting. Other times they'll expand. It's, it's going to be hard to predict exactly. But the overall trend is prices go down and value goes up. And so... The reason that Tesla is going to be able to be successful over the longer term is because they're going to keep driving costs down and keep making their vehicles better. The Cybertruck's a great example with the new architecture, the 48 volt steer by wire, a bunch of innovations that are now going into the next generation vehicle. They force the hand of the entire industry, not just to electric vehicles, but now they have to adopt the architecture of Cybertruck. And we heard from Haggerty right there, here's how to do 48 volt architecture, you idiots. Yeah. Here's the whole DIY manual. 
So Tesla is constantly trying to disrupt themselves. And so that's the way that they can retain a technical to a lead. If as a Tesla investor, you ever notice the company is becoming complacent and not doing disruptive things and moving into new areas and trying to drive costs down and really aggressively improving their products to the point where you realize, oh, that new product is going to kill this product or going to you know, slow this, or they're not maximizing their short-term profits. If you ever start to see, to see Tesla trying to maximize short-term profits, they're in trouble. But if you see mm. them constantly trying to make their products better and cheaper and innovate, I think it's a happy days for a long time. I mean, that's, that's such a beautiful encapsulation of everything we've talked about. So let's just end it there because that was fucking perfect. Thank you so much, brother. Perfect. I really appreciate you. It's been a pleasure, man. Love to chat. It's been uh, too long since the last one. It's been too long. It's almost like, I feel like we're almost doing these like yearly. I think just we- about, yeah. Yeah, once a year. Well, last, I think it's the last time we spoke time. when people were getting mad about Elon having opinions and I'm like, bro, Elon's yes. going to Elon, just <laughs> fucking chill. And Elon continues yeah. to Elon and Elon's Elon even more and nothing has changed. Yeah, was it was right around this time last year when he, like right after he purchased Twitter, I think. It was like November-ish. Yeah. 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 Well, lots happened since then, but nothing's changed with Elon. Has it no. And it won't. Yep. <laughs> and it won't. That's obvious. Yeah, dude, thank you so much. It's, it's it's always an honor speaking with you. And it's, it's always so much fun. Um, let's fucking keep doing it every year. Fuck it. Why not? <laughs> man. <laughs> well, next year, maybe if the timing's right, I might even be able to do it in person. Oh, oh so is that happening?